Hello everybody, and welcome back to our second episode of FTV Sky's Expert Mode. As you saw by that intro there, I did just a little bit more work on our island while we were waiting between episodes. I built a new section just behind me there, farmed up a bit more wood and some resources to have go through our sifters, and we turned in a few quests and got us some little items behind us that I'll show off now. Oh, that's not right. So we got ourselves a rain shield here, and that was from making a bed, which is this quest over here. So I made some flint shears to make sure I would get some leaves, which were good for the composter. I made wool from strain, which you're supposed to do from sheep, but I made it from strain just so I can make a bed so I could sleep. Because the nighttime was plaguing me and I wanted to get rid of the rain. Luckily enough, you can get a rain shield and completely disable the rain, so that's a very useful quest. If you're having trouble with the rain and you don't want to deal with it anymore, this gives you a rain shield. You just place it down and while the rain just goes away magically. And then over here we have an altar, which we got from the quest line Occultism up here, which is just, uh, just a bit further down in the list. And that was just a few things. We got some stone, some soul sand, and other things as well. So that's pretty useful. We're going to need those uh, later down the line. So we want to work towards getting the cobble generator today. And the first thing we need to do to do so is get this endless witch gate pearl here, which will spawn a bunch of witches on like boss waves from a portal. And you can kill them as much or as little as you want. And then once you just get out of the way of the witches and just let them sit there, they will despawn, the gate will close, and I believe you get the gate back. But if not, you'll just have to craft another one. All right. Now I might look a little bit different than I did in the last clip you just saw. Unfortunately, I was not recording when I placed on the Witch Pearl for our next step in our quests. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Just to show you guys how this works. As you see, I've died quite a few times. If I open up the map, I have quite a few deaths. And that is because this thing spawns a lot of witches. First one, pretty easy to kill. Second one, spawns two. Third one, spawns three. And they apply many different effects to you, like weakness and a bunch of other things. So... Killing them is very hard. So what I've been doing is just letting myself die, like so, refreshing the weakness counter. So now I don't have weakness, and I can come back in and kill them until I get splashed with weakness again, that is. It's basically just a luck thing, whether you get weakness or not, because when, when you have weakness on you, it is pretty much near impossible to actually do any damage. As you saw, we just knocked that witch over the edge. You get your witch pearl back, which is super useful. And uh, yeah, you can just scroll on this to see uh, what you get. Oh, sorry. And then you can hold control and you'll get uh, loot rolls and resin dust and more witches. And then penalties is another witch get pearl. Maybe we'll have better than that next time. So it basically just give you your pearl back, which is really useful. Now, since you have this shark tooth mending saw, using this as your tool to kill them, very, very useful. Four attack speed, not too bad. Four point attack damage, also not terrible. And as you saw, we got plenty of redstone. Now I did, like I said, I farmed them a bit off screen as my recording was not working. And we got ourselves a few apotheosis gems. Actually, four apotheosis gems, that's not bad at all. A bit of glowstone, some spider eyes, and glass bottles. So, all very useful things. Instant health potion. We'll go ahead and drink that. I did use the one god apple we got from one of our quests, but then realized I still get splashed with weakness, and that a god apple is actually useless in that fight. So, I do not recommend doing that. You also get a bit of sugar and sticks. So, that's very useful. We'll throw that in there for now. And we need this redstone to continue on get ourselves an apple so we can actually heal up cool so we can take the shield off put that in there wasn't very useful get ourselves our inventory sorted back out and we'll throw the witch pearl in here for now 
and get ourselves a bit more chests down on the ground because we're running out of space real quick. So yeah, the next thing in our quest book here is the blood sigil. So you place a blood sigil inside the hexray cauldron. It'll just you'll just basically place it in here. You'll see it visible in the bottom there, and then you can get blood in your system. So to make one of these, I need liquid biomass, redstone and blackstone. So redstone crossed off the list. We can say that's done. The next thing we need is liquid biomass. So to get liquid biomass, you need to make a slow melter 9000. Now this is something they've added into the pack themselves, I believe. And this is just up here in the quest book. So here is the super cooler. I believe this is the slow melter. Yes, here's the slow melter. So we're going to need to make some early game power production, and that will be in the form of a peat farm. Now, if you played forestry back in the early days of modded Minecraft, you know what peat is. I'm told this is somewhat similar to old forestry peat farms, so that's very exciting to see. Quite the hefty recipe, but it in retrospect, it is all just iron, copper, and cobblestone, redstone, and some nether quartz. Now you may be wondering, how do we get nether quartz? We haven't found any yet, other than a bit of nether quartz dust. And this can't be made back into nether quartz without something like a crystallizer. So how you get nether quartz is by taking soul sand and throwing it into a spirit fire and getting a bunch of soul sand in return. I lost a lot of soul sand in that. Not entirely sure how. Like, I lost a lot. I think it mostly went over the edge. That is quite unfortunate. <laughs> I think a lot, yeah, a lot of it seemed went over the edge or into the other fire. So don't do a whole stack like I just did. That's a lot of sand wasted. However, we're going to go ahead and spread that through eight and then throw this in our sifters, which will allow us easy and quick processing of all the soul sand and hopefully get us some quartz. So over here, uh, this won't work. These are overstressed at the current speed, unfortunately. So what I have to come do is I need to fix the system in the end, but a temporary solution to it is just doing something like that. These will run at the same speed, and then this guy up here won't run anymore because it's not fast enough. So I need to fix this and rehaul this, maybe do two water wheels just for uh, my sifters, and then have these much faster over here. And then we can go ahead and make the, the observers. We'll need the redstone. We'll need ourselves some cobblestone. Should be plenty. So we can make ourselves two observers. All right, so we got a few things, a uh, few copper ingots here. The rest are smelting over our furnace here. And we should be able to craft everything here now. So we need, how many components do we need? Just the four. Okay, we'll grab four for now. We'll need a lot more later on for sure. We need some sheet metals, just like that. We'll make eight, just in case. Make ourselves the light machine blocks. And then we need a pity machine frame. We'll make, yeah, we'll make three of them. Why not? It's not gonna hurt. And then we just need two more copper ingots. There we go. And we got ourselves a peat generator. So this peat generator here will allow us to generate uh, forge energy, FE by using peat and they give you four peat with the quest right away which is actually really nice because otherwise you will need to generate the peat yourself which isn't too hard that's why you made the biomass earlier to make both biomass and also to make peat so this uses coal dust biomass and dirt i know there's a lot of options there but it's just dirt plain and simple and we don't actually have any dirt on hand so that's very useful that they give it to us however like i said it's just uh, you make this dry peat bog, you throw dirt, biomass, and coal dust into a mixer, and then if you read the information from just knife items, when placed next to water, it'll turn into saturated peat deposit, which can be smelted to create fuel for the generator, which will make saturated peat deposit here, 
which you can smelt, and to make peat, which will make RF in the peat generator that we just made. So it's all pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and where do we want to place this? I kind of want to go back that way, but for now, we'll just use our corner over here or that. And we can turn this guy off and put our peat in here and it'll generate for energy that we can access later. And we don't mind if it just runs because this has an internal buffer 64,000. Each one of these only generates... Oh, nope, they generate 100,000. So we're only going to need the... Oh, no, it has 640,000. 640, okay, I, th I thought I was right earlier, but yeah, I'm fine. So yeah, we can throw all four ingots in here, and it will be fine. Oh, we have another goat. Where is he? I've yet to be knocked off the edge by one of these things. Oh, he died. That poor goat. Yeah, I've yet to be knocked off the edge by one of them. Cross fingers. <laughs> All right, we can throw that in there. So the next thing we want to do is get ourselves a slow melter 9000. So this is what will allow us to make our biomass right here. So we're able to make a liquid biomass and that's what we need to make our lava bucket in the generator. So we need the slow melter 3000 here. So we need two blocks of quartz, which we said earlier as we get from soul sand we need two glass and two blocks of redstone so we got plenty of redstone from the witches but i did not make any sand for glass and i don't believe i have any all right we got ourselves uh our glass here so we can go ahead and make our slow melter 9000 this guy can come right over here and it is already full of power this thing so has internal buffer so that's going fine and we'll throw our biomass in here and it should make Wait, what is the difference? 40 FE per tick, 60 ticks, 60 ticks. Oh, okay, it'll just depend on how much we get in return. So two biomass is better, yeah. So we can just do like so, right? Yeah, there we go. All right, we got ourselves one bucket of biomass here. Just right click into our hex right cauldron. It'll go into this output. And if we want a blood sigil, we need the biomass here, and then we also need blackstone. Now, blackstone you get from haunting. Where is it? Yeah, you get used from haunting, uh, endstone, tough, dripstone, any of the blocks, cobblestone, and so on and so forth. So we got to make ourselves a fan from create. Oh, nope. There we go. So we got to make ourselves a fan from create, which is just an instant casing, a propeller, and a shaft. Alrighty, folks. We set up our bulk haunter back here. All we did was just take out our rotational force with some shafts, some gears, and a case fan here, and then into a soul fire. And now if we chuck some cobblestone down, this will haunt the cobblestone over time. It does look like it's going through the void right now, but I can assure you it's not. And we can go ahead, take some polished blackstone, which will allow us to make the thing over here. So if I lift this up. And I do that. Why didn't that one go in? There we go. Am I crazy? Does the soul fire not work? Okay, we'll make ourselves a campfire. That's bizarre. I didn't think it needed that, but we go with it. There we go. And that will start working. And then we got our blood sigil right away. Nice. So now that our blood sigil is in here, you can just stand inside and it will take hunger well sorry it will take health away and each time you jump on it you will collect some blood all right we got ourselves enough blood in the blood cauldron here so we can stick eight stone into it and with two thousand buckets of blood it will produce one stone and it'll produce a thousand buckets of lava and that is uh, explained in the quest over here. You can also get lava by using the magma crucible. Sorry, not the magma crucible, the mechanical squeezer. And you can squeeze either netherrack, magma cream, or blaze powder. We, at the moment, don't have access to blaze powder, but we will eventually. However, we now have infinite lava. 
And by that, I mean the fact that we can use dripstone in a fluid hopper to make automatic lava. All right, so the first thing we want to do here with our first bucket of lava is go ahead and make a cobblestone generator. This will allow us to make infinite cobblestone for the time being. And we'll go ahead and make ourselves a cobblestone drawer. And is this buckets? Oh, no, it's netherrack. Okay. Interesting. It's just more cobblestone. All right, we can go ahead and actually get ourselves tier two. Can we make a tier three? No, we can't. We can't make a tier three just quite yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and get myself another bucket of lava. And we're going to make a tier two cobblestone generator right away. All right, so we made ourselves a second bucket of lava. And we should be able to use cobblestone for this. Which, for some reason, I put all in the smelter to make stone for the bucket of lava. However, if I grab a second one here, now we have a tier 2 generator. Which, yeah, the quest is already complete. And this will crush materials down using the hammer based on the tier of hammer. Oh, perfect. So we also have an auto hammer. Awesome. That's actually a really good quest. Yeah, this is... Oh, wow. This is a really, really good quest. We got an automatic iron hammer, which I believe will use the pizza generator's power. Uh, we'll set that up later. However, for now, we just want to get ourselves some cobblestone going. So we'll just stick this guy right up here, and we'll stick a chest, or a, a drawer, sorry, directly on top. Now we're just getting cobblestone automatically, permanently, so that's great. So we went ahead and set ourselves up a dripstone lava generator so we just made ourselves another bucket of lava in our mixing cauldron here and if you put it on top of a block with a dripstone underneath pointed into a cauldron you will get lava now the quest also gives you a fluid hopper and i believe there was another quest in here somewhere that gave you a basic fluid tank so i just have this dripping down to the cauldron through the fluid hopper right into the fluid tank we already have a free bucket of lava so that's going to passively generate for the time being while we're on our island. And we won't have to make lava this way anymore. And we'll expand this later down the line until we get a better source of lava generation. However, that is going to end off today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a shorter one, unfortunately. I'm not feeling the best right now. And I need to prepare for next episode and get a bunch of resources done off screen and I hope that next episode we can get ourselves in our first iron ingot and start to get into Ars Nouveau. So if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, tell me what you thought about the episode, and subscribe while you're down there. Thank you guys. See you next time. Bye.